Hi, my name is Scott Keegan. I'm with the Challenge Golf Association. You're about to witness a day in the life of the Invitational. It's exciting. It's unique. It's all about servanthood. Just like God's grace, it's free. Just like a mulligan in golf, it offers a second chance. It's good stewardship. It's well thought out. It's more than a game. CGA is, uh, they're involved in bringing men to Christ through golf in a very non-invasive, non-threatening place, and that's the golf course. I was compelled to come out today and be a caddy because, you know, I believe that uh, life is about loving God and loving others. So uh, us caddies out there today are going to be out there just uh, loving on these guys, finding, uh, finding their balls when they get out uh, in the wrong direction, um, helping them with their lie, letting them know uh, which way uh, the ball is going to cut on the, on the green. We're going to be holding the flag for them today and just doing anything we can to help them out, make their golf enjoyable where they don't have to do anything but uh, line it up and shoot her straight. I became a, uh, a partner by uh, becoming an ambassador to help support it financially because uh, unchurched golfers uh, in this invitational, a wonderful way to present Jesus through uh, golf. So my passions on both sides a wonderful blend. Life is about a second chance and hopefully their second chance tonight when they get to listen to the guest speaker they will give their hearts to God and become servants for God and realize that life is about second chances as well as mulligans. As soon as I, I found out what CGA was all about, I had to be a part of it. Um, it, is, it is such a, a, an incredible ministry that provides an avenue for wonderful godly men to invite uh, uh, gentlemen that maybe have not had an opportunity to to find the Lord. It took an automobile accident, a crippling automobile accident. I was in the hospital for seven weeks and I was in a wheelchair for one year. Never thought I'd ever play golf again. But during that downtime, I found the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And this ministry provides that means to those that maybe don't want a head-on collision in their automobile, but just a means by which they can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ So my wife said to me in 2001, she said, are you ever going to play again? Because the doctor said I'd never play golf again because I didn't have a left hip. I wasn't able to turn over onto the left hip because there wasn't a hip there. They just put steel and bone fragments in there and they were hoping that it, that it would create some sort of uh, socket that they could then put an artificial hip in there and it might work. They said there was yeah, you're probably never going to walk without a permanent limp, and you'll never play golf again. So she said to me in 2001, are you ever going to play golf again uh, competitively? And I said, well, I really don't have, have any desire to. I haven't played in, in so long. She said, well, why don't we pray about it? And that's what we always do. My wife is, is so much more spiritually inclined than I am, and, and I'm blessed to have her. So. Starting in September of 2001, Francis and I prayed every day on a, on a daily basis. And this was the prayer. Lord, I want to play again. At the, I want to play at the highest level. I want to earn my way in. And once I get there, I want a platform in which I can tell people about what you've done in my life. So we prayed that prayer for September through... March. March, I was working for PGA Tour Radio. I was down at the Players' Championship, and I bumped into John Daly. And John and I were friends for a lot of years. And uh, I said to him, I said, you know, I see you on, on TV all the time for that, that uh, Indian casino over in Mississippi, Dancing Rabbit. It's uh, really a difficult golf course. And he said to me, it's a really tough course, uh, GP. You need to get over and play it. So in May, when entries were closing for the United States Senior Open, uh, I was looking at all the qualifying sites. I decided that I was going to try to qualify for the United States Senior Open in 2002. I hadn't, hadn't tried to qualify for Opens or anything for 20 years. 
So uh, I looked at the course in Georgia. Uh, I didn't like the course. I looked at all the courses around the surrounding areas, Alabama, the Panhandle of Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee it was at the Holston Hills in Knoxville. Um, uh, and then I saw Mississippi and it said Dancing Rabbit. And I remembered what John Daly said. And for a professional, if you're going to qualify for a, for a major championship and you haven't played in a long time, you certainly don't want to go to a golf course that everybody's going to be shooting low. You want to go to a hard golf course where if you shoot a good round, it means something. Because there, are, there have been a lot of times in my life that I'd shoot 69 in a U.S. Open qualifying and I did, wouldn't get in. But I wanted, if I shot a, a decent round, I wanted to have a shot. So I put Dancing Rabbit down, told my wife, for U.S. Senior Open, you either, you either uh, bring a caddy or bring a driver for a golf cart. You can put your bag on the cart, but you have to walk course. So I brought, I brought my wife. We went to Mississippi. I walked out on the practice tee Sunday afternoon. I bumped into Sam Farlow, nine-time Alabama amateur champion, and he said to me, Greg Powers, I thought you were dead. <laughs> and I just laughed and I said, no, Sam, I've, I've just been out of pocket a while. I'm still around. And he said, listen to this. He said, well, welcome back. We got 56 for one. Anybody know what that means? 56 players for one spot. Now, as you see on that, on that thing that's uh, uh, passed out, I've qualified for 10 U.S. Opens, and I've never, ever played for less than three spots. Once, once up in Cincinnati, I, there were 49 players for three spots. 56 for one, I said, you got to be kidding me. He said, don't buy the call in the USGA. We've already called them. We've complained. They're not going to change. 56 for one. So I was the second group off. Uh, went out and played a practice round that, that afternoon, Sunday. So I was the second group off on, on Monday. And um, I birdied the 17th hole, easiest hole on the course. The 18th hole is the most difficult. 470 yards, dog leg right, uphill, par four, water to the right. I hit driver and five wood. So I birdied 17 to get to one under for the day. Driver five wood into the 17th hole, about 25 feet short of the hole. I ran my putt about three feet by, and I lipped it out coming back. Bogey, even par 72. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. I said, I might have a chance with one under. So we got up to the scoreboard and turned my card in, and it was, it was, I, of course, being the second group in, I was low. There was a 75 from the first group. So I said to my wife, I said, honey, uh, let's pack the car and let's head on back. And she said, well, nobody's beat you. And I said, look, somebody out of 56 <laughs> players is going to shoot under par and we're not waiting around to play for alternates. So she said, we're not leaving until somebody beats you. And I said, all right, I'm going in the clubhouse. You can stay out here and wait. To make a long story short, the next to the last group, there was a pro that came up, sat down at the scores table, looked up at the board, and there was the number 72. Number se well, they started with 70. There was nobody, nobody at 71, 72, Greg Powers. 73, there were 12 73s, 12. So he looks up at the board and he said, well, Merry Christmas, Greg Powers. He just finished 6-6 six, six for 73 and, and I got the spot. No playoff. No playoff. If he'd have gone Bogey, bogey, he'd have shot, he'd have shot, let's say he was, he was two, yeah, he shot 71. If he goes bogey par, he shoots 72. Playoff. But he goes bogey, double bogey for 73. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you what my prayer was. I told you what the prayer was. 
I want to qualify, I want to play at the highest level. I want to earn my way in and I want to have a platform in which I can tell people about what you've done in my life. So we, on our way home, I looked at Francis and I said, can you believe this? This is a prayer answered. And, um, and that's, how he, that's how he works. Because when you give your life to him, he said, he said, it says in the Bible, ask me for anything that I might get the glory and I'll do it. And so God says, don't test him. He said, thou shalt not test the Lord thy God, but you can pray to him and ask him for something specific. And if he, if he allows that to happen, then you know it was him, not me. So we get to Baltimore, Caves Valley, 10 days later. Uh, I walked in and uh, the first person I saw was Tom Meeks, Executive Director of the United States Golf Association. I've known Tom for all the years that I played in Open Championships. He comes, off, he comes walking up to me, gives me a hug and he said, I talked to Payne Stewart the other day, or excuse me, Paul Azinger the other day, and he said, he told me what's happened in your life. He said, I'm so happy for you. And I said, thanks, Tom. He said, if there's anything I can do, uh, just let me know. So I'm on, on Tuesday, I'm on the practice tee, a practice green, getting ready to go play a practice round with three of my buddies that I used to play with. Bob Gilder, Mark McCumber, and Joe Inman. And remember the prayer. Qualify at the highest level, earn my way in, and provide a platform in which I can tell people about what you've done in my life. It's such a hard thing to get through this next part. Tom Meeks comes walking across the parking lot and he said, Greg, Jack Nicholas just canceled out of his 11.30 press conference and the United States Golf Association wants you to come and tell your story to the worldwide press. <laughs> Qualify at the highest level, earn my way in, and a platform that was marked Jack Nicholas have the biggest crowd the most influential and worldwide crowd. And through that, I appeared, I, I appeared on over 50 radio stations all across the country because in all of the papers across the country, it was, it was a story about um, a spiritual gift given to a professional golfer. USA Today covered that story and there were stories from these sports writers all across the country. And through that, people started calling me, radio stations started calling me. And I got to share my story and I got to have people call in and, and um, ask me questions about how, how, I, how I could you know, get plugged in in a spiritual way. And I, and I got an opportunity to share that. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. And I, you know, I have no idea how, how much I appreciate the fact that I get to come to these Challenge Golf events and, and see the worthwhile faces that some know him, some don't know him, but some are here for a reason. I would have been, I've, I've, I've gone to Billy Graham Crusades and sat in a football stadium uh, and didn't know him. And at the end, when he asked for people to walk forward to say the sinner's prayer, and I never, I never walked forward. What it took was a head-on collision, taking my career away, making me a total invalid. And through that, I was able to find him and start to march to his beat. And, and through, through Challenge Golf, we get an opportunity to turn a lot of heads and a lot of hearts in the right direction. And, and for that reason, I'm so thankful to see you all here tonight.
Thank you very much. What a great night. Uh, great turnout. I mean, it's beyond our expectations. We got to plant the ministry, plant the seed, and we'll see what happens from there. We get to do follow-up. We follow up with a breakfast for us this coming Sunday to meet their families, and they can meet our families with our church staff. And then we take the Caddy Action Program and follow up with these guys to let them know that we just didn't say, good luck, I hope you make it. But we get to follow up with them, all the things that they go through with us. I know I myself would prefer that somebody cares about me, and I think that's what we've done today is show these guys that we really care, just like Jesus did for his disciples. We got to do that with them, and it was just awesome. I mean, uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm overwhelmed of what, what we got to do today and transpired. A lot of it we won't see right now, but the Bible also says that uh, his word won't return void. So we've planted that word in their hearts, and I'm looking forward to see the outcome. It's going to be great. We trust you now get the significance of the Invitational. Please check out our website for updates, including comments by PGA Tour players on the Challenge Golf Association. Thank you for taking the time to watch.